Thank you for joining us wherever you are. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Old Ways Actual Play Team. This actual play uses the 7th edition Call of Cthulhu tabletop role-playing game rules by Chaosium. This actual play is performed by adults and in an adult setting. While we try very hard to stick to languages for all ages, listeners should know that this podcast may include mature themes. All content, including names, places, events, companies, and etc. that may bear resemblance to entities living or dead is strictly coincidental. My name is Michael Diamond, and for tonight's game, I will be your keeper. Thank you for joining us again on another episode of the Old Ways Podcast. I am your keeper, Keeper Michael, and we return to Masks of Neomothetep in the Egypt chapter. We have an awful lot to get to tonight, but at the top of the show, we'd like to thank our patron backers and our listeners. If you'd like to join the patron and uh, perhaps help save some of these dear souls, you can at patreon.com slash the old ways podcast. And now introductions may begin to my right. This is Tiffany and I play Maeve O'Shea and I don't want to die. Want in one hand and shit in the other and we'll see what happens, Miss O'Shea. To Miss O'Shea's right. This is Morgan. I play Lillian Lane and I have a rifle and you know what that means. <laughs> Sorry about that, Lonnie. <laughs> At the end of the table. <laughs> this is Jake. I'm playing Jack Doyle and I have, good, I have a good feeling about this. Yeah. I, I like do. that. Positivity yeah. is very important. So uh, to Jack's right. Uh, this is Lonnie and I am playing Adel Zar, um, the man with a target on his back. Um, and I also want to say that once again, I am one step away from being a former player at this table. <laughs> <laughs> a role you serve in so well. To uh, Mr. Zar's right. This is James. I'll be playing Dr. Sigmund Tannenberg. And well, since Lillian has a rifle, I'm going to make sure my Dr. Bag is close here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Not a bad idea at all. To the doctor's right. Uh, this is Alex playing saint Bruno, who ponders in the moments before impending chaos. Whose war is he being asked to fight again? You know, that's a fantastic question. One that is likely not asked often enough. And that means that we have a special guest because obviously last but most certainly not least is our special guest. Hi there, this is Allie and I am returning as Alexandra Swift. Well. Here we are, my friends. Let me set the scene for you in case, for whatever reason, you forgot where you were. We are in the vast deserts outside of Cairo. We have left the pyramids of Giza behind, the Sphinx in all its glory, and several of the other well-known monuments of the Valley of the Dead. Beyond that, we have found our way to a temple. One dedicated to a very old god. One who has been somewhat helpful for some, and perhaps a little less helpful for others. That said, the investigators are now staring at a wide line of sand as it rises off some of these dunes. And... They have heard on the air the voice, the same voice from that night in Cairo, dooming them to be uh, picked clean at some point by the forces of the Black Pharaoh, which are arrayed in front of him. Half man, half beasts, hippos, crocodiles, birds, hounds, all sorts of unspeakable nasties await them. Inside the temple waits Sigmund Tottenbach trying to desperately hold on to his position here where the mummified body of Nito Kris waits. He's surrounded by scores of serpents in every shape and size, but the majority are dark, brown, black snakes. And at the mouth of that temple await our heroes. Arrayed around the front. And so, at the back of the temple, Sigmund, you hear the 
measured footsteps of a body, a form. Someone is approaching, and their footfalls give a gravitas that draws your attention away from the mummy and the snakes, even. That's pretty impressive. This form that comes out is feminine. A bit taller than the last time that you saw her. Her skin is now uh, a very light, almost bronze sheen has taken over. She wears a very wide red headdress with some sort of golden crown atop of it. Uh, She's dressed in beautiful regalia from head to toe. And there is a certain, a certain serpent quality to her features. Her cheekbones have sharpened up. Her eyes are not the human ones you've seen before. There is something awe-inspiring and yet terrifying about her. You feel like prey when she walks towards you. And the biggest concern is, is that true? I'm not really paying attention to much at the moment. I am heading towards the mummy to look her over, which means that the snakes naturally part in my presence. And I naturally have my most faithful servant, Tariq, following me. And for a few moments, I just let my eyes and hands rest on the mummy's form and just whisper, Mictocris, Tariq. The uh, figure that you'd seen before in the back, Dr., steps up immediately. And you see as he comes forward, his uh, his muscles like across his chest and shoulders ripple like unnaturally. And he seems to grow in physical size. Yes, ma'am. Please grab Nito Chris for us. We need to take her upstairs. At once. And so Sigmund, she's standing right next to you when she says this And Tariq basically (laughs) interdicts between the two of you. He doesn't excuse himself. He just fills the space. Like I'm barely there. Like you don't exist. Exactly. From that non-existent point, it is a great place to observe. Uh, So I'm going to get every detail I can of how they're dressed, how they move. Skin and cheekbones, uh, you know, biologically. That fascinates me. So I won't make you roll for it because you have had experience with similar serpent folk before, especially mm. in Chicago. Whatever whatever foulness, whatever malady or misshapenness, the form in Chicago that, that you pulled back to the laboratory or to, to the office, rather. Casting back to my autopsy days. Certainly. Whatever missteps that creature had encountered, whatever whatever changes, imperfections, this is the opposite. Tariq is a he's a work of art. His muscles are corded just like a serpent. And his face and upper body move. His muscles don't so much move like a human, they flow. So when he reaches down and picks up the body, the movement is effortless. And when he turns, he knows that he'll, he would end up moving in your, he he basically would be hitting you with the mummy to turn around. And he simply pivots it up and over your body, like over your head in a move. Effortlessly, I assume. Oh yeah. I mean, you saw Jack move Nito Chris. She's not heavy. But this is something else. Hmm. Fast. Try to take as many mental notes as I can, uh, because this is essentially the other end of research that I started, I don't know, what, a year and a half, two couple of years ago. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, this is back to 23. Mm-hmm. So it's been a couple of years. But here it is. And then um, turn to the priestess. And uh, if she denies to look at me, I give her a deep and sincere bow. Yeah, it's really up to her. I give you a couple beats silently before I walk away, following Tariq before taking the lead and disappearing behind a corner. Stay in the bowing, looking down. Not exactly, you know, uh, not exactly full kowtow, but, you know, until she leaves. Yeah, the couple of beats that she stays there and you get this this rush of something wild, something there's something behind her eyes that isn't human. It's almost like a candle or a lantern that's been um, had a had a hood put over it, right? Or like some sort of frosted glass. Like there's something in there. And it's hard to explain what it is. Doc is fascinated and a little saddened that he can't study whatever that is a little more. But he also feels that on a very real level, he's probably quite lucky to be getting away with his skin at this moment. So he's going to kind of call it a wash. Okay. So outside, the night has brought many foul creatures to the stairway door. Uh, And so... The hills beyond there begin to dispill out with all sorts of new and sickening animal noises as you see them begin to descend the dunes towards the temple. That initiative will go to you, Miss Lane, at 140. Okay. Um, are they they're still moving? They're not standing up on the on the dunes. They are not standing up on the dunes. They're they are running, moving. They're running towards us. They are going to be moving directly towards you. I'm standing. I think Jack and I are both standing at the top of the stairs. Yes. Pillars. Yeah. But um, I'd like to actually shoot at the one that's in front. Okay. So that is a firearms rifle roll. It is. And I have a 65 in that. And I get a 46. Nope. I lied. 49. Out <laughs> of okay. 65. Roll damage. So 2d6 plus 4 for damage. Mm-hmm. I've got a 10. Okay. I will make my first roll of the evening. I am using a wonderful set of blue metal dice this evening. So, Lillian, you you take up that most treasured possession, and you feel your hand along the wooden stock, and you feel the just the lightest touch of your palm on initials that are etched into the stock here. And you hear in your left ear a voice that says, give him hell, kid. And that first round comes out of the rifle and you drop that lead one like a stone. And so we will drop to 125. Sam. I will uh, curse my impetuousness for trying to get an elevated position, but feeling a little reassured after a million shot, I will get to a knee and uh, steady the 45 and I will look for I'm looking for mobile targets I've I've seen these things move in a pack I don't know if some of them are faster than others now that they've slowed down I don't know if I'm able to make out their forms but I'm looking for I'm looking for ones that are that seem particularly swift and particularly dangerous and if I have to wait a little while to see how they move I will okay you're you're to do that, you'd need to hold and make a spot hidden roll. Hard difficulty. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Whatever, whenever you choose to take your action will be your new initiative. Okay. That is Sam's action. While he is rolling spot hidden, he can report to me what it is. And that's a failure, so... 89, okay, 89, you're going to leave it, or are you going to push or spend luck? Well, considering the well, a hard... You said it was a hard spot hidden, so that would take like 40 luck. I did. Or something yep. like that. Um, yeah, considering my last my last round of luck with pushing, I will defer to the darkness. And I guess since I can't really make out 
uh, details, I'll take my first shot. Alica Blamp, <laughs> 27 under 74. Okay. Um, so I, I guess what I'll ask is, would you be shooting for the center? Would you be shooting for the north or the south? How many approaches do I do? Does it look like there are valid approaches from both directions? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It looks like what's going to happen is they're going to stream over these hills down towards you. Okay. Uh, then I will shoot north. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and make me a damage roll, sir. As you target the first one in. It's 1d, yeah, 1d8 plus 1d6 plus 3. So 8 plus 11. Okay. You drop the next one. Sigmund, you inside the temple begin hearing rifle fire. I'm going to move your initiative down, Sam, 10 points. You'll now go on 115. No problem. Uh, so Jack with readied weapon on 110. Okay, so they're beyond my base range. Depending on what you're using. Well, I, all I have is my uh, 45. Okay. Yeah, they are. Definitely. So I think... So is it, dis- is it a disadvantage roll if I... Yeah, it would add disadvantage, and that would be that would be for single shot. Yeah, so, right. if you decided to to do more weapon fires, you would get additional disadvantage dice for every right. bullet after. Right. So, I think I'm just going to take one shot. Okay. Um, so, I would say up center or north north center or south. Uh, we'll continue with north. Okay. Now, you know, I'm on the south side, so I'll do south. <laughs> so I hit. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. Seven hundred eighty-four. Six. So uh, you line up just this first one that's about to make their first step down, and you fire and you connect, and you hear the thing roar from over here. It's not um, loud, but it, but and it's not dead for sure. But you definitely hit it. Otto, what, what are we doing on seventy? Running inside the temple looking for oil. Oh, okay. Where are you going to look for it at? I'm going to look in the place where we had food to start with. Okay. So we'll say that this round, you're going to use all of your movement Mm -hmm. to get to the eatery area. Yep. So that is your action. Yep. Use the entire action to basically run down the hall. This is something you would see as well, Sigmund. You'd see Otto running and then hooking a, a left for you, but a right for him and going down to the uh, spot where into the, the temple hallway where the, the eatery is. Uh, he seems to be a man with a plan. Hmm. I must be going well out there. On 65, we have two actions. One would be Maeve and the other would be Alexandra. So my question would be is, which of the two sisters would like to go first? Well, I had stated at the end of last episode that I had started casting uh, Call Lightning. Yeah, so you're just going to continue that, yeah. So basically, I'm going to keep my eye on the biggest group since I can't make out like specific forms, but I can see like which group of them is bigger. I'm going to keep my eye on that. So when Call Lightning, you know, when I can cast it, because it's going to take them several minutes probably to, you know, get up to the temple. Um, I can hit at the biggest group of them. That is my plan. Okay. So what we'll say is that this round you're going to be casting. Yeah. But you're going to keep your eyes peeled? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So I'm going to um, go ahead and give um, this initiative to Miss Swift. With Tariq and Toe, I'll be looking for a turn in the corner but keeping note of my distance to my little sister. And I have a dagger on hand that I will just lightly run across the back of my hand. And through the blood in the air and our blood connection, I will begin a spell that will allow my little sister to, well, endure a little more. So I would like you to make me a power roll. Uh, 38, so that's a hard. 
And the spell you are going to be utilizing on her is... Flesh Ward. Okay. So you are going to Flesh Ward her. So here's what I'd like you to do. I would like you to spend some magic points. And to spend those magic points, you need to give me a specific amount that you're spending into Flesh Ward. So the calculation for it is a D6 point of armor for every magic point you spend. And because you're doing it through the blood, every magic point you spend, you're going to be spending a hit point. Understood. So I will spend four. Okay. Very good. So it's four HP, four MP for you in this casting. And then I'm going to roll 46. So, Miss O'Shea, you feel your body blossom. It tingles. Every part of your being begins to vibrate with a, a very strong energy. And just here on the tips of your fingers down to your forearms, you begin to see your skin ripple. And out of that ripple, a beautiful, dark scale begins to bloom. It covers your forearms. You feel it ride down your chest, over your stomach and your legs. And you're going to gain 18 points of armor. And they are yours until they are exhausted. Right. I made a note so I can, you know, take care of them as needed. Perfect. That is Alexandra's action. And in technically Maeve is casting... And so why don't you give me a power roll, Miss O'Shea, to continue casting? That's a failure. So you could either spend luck or you could push that roll, but a failed power roll will mean a loss of the spell. 15 luck yeah. or a re-roll, up to you. I'll spend the luck. All right. She wants the sure thing, folks. And who can blame her? Okay. You hold the spell. Given the gunfire... And everything going on in front of you. I don't really know if any of you outside in the tumble grounds would notice the change right away. But her voice on the air is getting higher and higher. The storm is beginning to get worse. Doctor, on 55. Docs? Uh, okay, so when they came through and parted the snakes every which way, have a lot of them like dissipated and followed the priestess? away or are there like mostly no snakes now not mostly no snakes but there was a definitive turn that you're now noticing with uh, her and her the guy who called himself Tariq <clears throat> whoever came in and grabbed the body uh, there's a definite turn in the number of snakes here most of them followed her out and into the deeper hallways of the temple speaking of those curiosity-laden deeper hallways of the temple. Doc is in going to be pretty much no fashion uh, helpful outside. But he might learn some interesting new stuff deeper in the temple as long as he's respectful and really quiet and doesn't get noticed. So he's going to do a little investigating while he's down here. Mm, is he... <laughs> He can't Wonderful not. Doctor. He has to touch some stuff, this too. This is how you end up with no flesh, Doctor. Okay. So I guess my question to you then is, uh, are you going to be following the way the snakes went? Yeah. Very good. Which, I mean, even saying it out loud sounds really dumb, but I'm going to go ahead and do it because it also sounds really fun. So, yeah. The rest I of the agree. snakes that I left with him should go with him because I basically pointed at him and told them to protect. Certainly. Certainly. You're not the only um, Yig priestess here, so right. their animal minds are probably a little bit torn given you know, who's wandering around. Sure. But that said, Doctor, you, um, you take off uh, just carefully down the hallway here, deeper into the temple. It turns right. You turn and you can see the kind of last vestiges of this group of snakes here. They make their way down deeper. And you can see that there's a light down here at the end of the hallway. It looks like it ends in some sort of small room. And in that small room, you see Tariq 
and this was woman that came out and they seem to be beginning to go through a, a set of stairs that go up interesting indeed so back outside we have things to do so the wave of gunfire that started gets a response and that response is many of these creatures begin to they, they begin to move down into the valley and so as they do they continue to make these sounds these animal roars and it really feels like just a, a wave of chaos is coming at you they fill the passages the north's passage the centralized location where there's this break in the dunes and then the south as well not all of them come completely down but most of them get they get conveniently into a space where you're Jack you're figuring just having had some battlefield experience live big battlefield experience it won't be more than 10 to 15 seconds maybe maybe 30 at most before they're on top of you Mm -hmm. and people are going to pick up the, the pace if they can yeah okay so that was their action. Behind that line, the dunes begin to glow with a very distinct purple color. You're not really sure what's happening other than you see this blossom of this globe of purple against the night sky. It swells up probably 5, 10 feet in diameter and then ripples back away. Something happened over there. It's a spot hidden roll is not needed because it was big enough that everybody can see it. And there's literally a glowing purple something going on. So uh, that actually gives you, unfortunately, way more light for a second, which is really disconcerting given all the terrifying creatures heading towards you. And so the second round is upon us. And so I will turn to you, Miss Lane, and ask, what will you do? So I had some I had some kickback with the last time I shot, um, and my arm is still pretty sore, mm-hmm. my my left arm. Um, so this time I am going to shoot the way my father shot Tommy and get down on one knee to help aim. Okay. And I am going to get a shot off at him. Go ahead. Um, that is a thirty-two out of sixty-five. Very good. Roll damage. That is a nine. Okay. Yeah, you fire. You wound them pretty badly. The bullet exits the rifle, and as it does, it rips through the top of their chest, and they spin them around, and it will fall to Sam after that. I will follow up Lillian's shot because we can't have any stragglers straggling, so considering I was already aiming north, I will just... I will rechamber and wink at it. But that is a that's a ninety nine over seventy four. Um, am I allowed to push these? You can't push combat rolls in classic Cthulhu. Oh, okay. But you can push combat rolls in pulp, and so you can push that if you would like. I would like to. I would warn you as your keeper that a failed push roll on a firearm is likely very bad. Oh, I'm sure it'll blow back in my face, but. Um... I only have about one and maybe two more rounds of the rifle before I have to switch weapons anyway. So yeah. um, if I hear if I hear the, the pang of metal, uh, I will just cross my fingers and hope. Yeah, it's a 60, 69 or 74, so that's a success. Okay, uh, so go ahead and roll damage. So 10 more to uh, Lillian's chump, and I will shake the rifle because whatever, whatever noise I heard was not happening. Yeah, the, Mar- the Martini Henry goes off, and uh, yeah, you easily pick them, pick him off. Yeah. I am not at all comfortable with the distance that's covering, so I'm going to yell down. Uh, I'm still up on this perch, right? I'm, I'm a, little, a bit elevated. Yeah, you're a little bit elevated. We don't have long, Jack. Yeah, we're going to pull back after this. Speaking of Jack, first I'm going to call over to Lillian. Right, soldier, you need to hit the Jerry's on the wings or they'll ne- we'll never get them to bunch up for the artillery. Do I make a face at him? Like, I, I don't know. Do you oh, have I any do. idea what he's talking oh, about? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't even, I don't even look at you. I just, just call off from the side. Okay. I'm going to just keep on aiming where I'm 
him in because I have no idea what he's talking about. Sure. <laughs> all right, I'll uh, <laughs> shoot another one on the south. Uh, probably the same one I just shot. I'm going to do uh, all three shots, though. Okay, so um, make each roll individually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So 33 on the first roll, shot. Roll damage. Do me a favor, roll damage. Oh, here. Because there's no sense in continuing right. if he's dead. Eight. Yeah, he dies. Now, if you'd like to, you could make other shots if you'd like to at disadvantage, obviously. Right. right. So, yeah, I'm going to. Two disadvantage for this one. 29. 32. Okay, roll damage. Uh, 11. Yeah. Dead. Uh, so this would be three disadvantage rolls. Yeah. 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 81, 858. <laughs> 82. 47. So 82 under 84. Yeah, roll damage. That blows. Max damage, 12. Okay. okay. <laughs> Stupid, simple. <laughs> yeah, it's a 10. Uh, okay. Yeah. So... Because you're both on the south side, Sam, you see him basically p- pistol firing at this range, and he's killing people. Only Jack. Right. <laughs> it's a little stunning. I'm I'm stunned. Otto, on 70. I am looking for grease, fat. You're making a spot hidden roll, sir. 38 under 61. Take five luck. Right next to where all of the cooking supplies are is a barrel of what you believe is cooking oil. Is it has is it sealed? Is there a top on it? There's a top on it. It doesn't look like it's firmly sealed. It looks like it could easily be removed and opened, but there is a top on it. I just wanted to see if I could roll it because I'm not strong enough to lever a barrel like no, that. No, probably not. Um, so you could attempt to make a strength roll to ensure the lid doesn't pop back off. You gotta seal that pickle jar up real good. All right, let's do it. 68 over 40. Okay. So it's in times like these, I think, that it's very important to allow, allow the hand of fate to step in and make it a success. Holy shit. Thank you, unnamed viewer. Hey, you seal up the barrel. Your contribution to this story is noted. <laughs> <laughs> so you seal the barrel with a good, hard, pound on top of it with those with that with that meat hook and then know in your heart that that thing is sealed and good to go roll it away all right you, you're going to use half your movement allowable because you're rolling a barrel yep you'll begin rolling it down the hallway back towards the entrance and that's your action uh so miss o'shea you allowed your sister to go first last time so we'll probably keep that action if that's a uh, Reasonable to you? Yeah. Okay. Alexandra, you are at the steps that lead uh, up through the secret passage to the top of the temple. Are you taking Tariq with you? Oh, yeah. Tariq uh, follows basically wherever I go. He does. And... Why wouldn't he? A face only a mother could love. Correct. So I will be walking up the steps... With haste. I am looking to reach the top of the temple and I will motion to Tariq to stop when I am on top and he is still at basically the top of the stairwell just to keep the mummy out of view. Uh, So, Sigmund, you're seeing this. You're seeing them climb the stairs with haste. And uh, it's a single staircase. It doesn't double back on itself. It goes straight up. Uh, at a probably 45, 55 degree angle. And the um, the priestess, that's the best term you probably have given the headdress and all the accoutrement. Uh, she opens some sort of hatch and begins to walk out onto the some sort of ledge that's there. And uh, Tariq still holds on to Nito Kris, almost like he's swaddling a, a, a loved one. And he crouches down on the staircase. Drat. He, that's when he looks back at you. <laughs> Double drat. <laughs> uh, well, my two in, my two arch nemeses being seen and stares. Uh, <clears throat> well, Doc is not particularly stealthy, so he's not going to 
make any effort to hide, but he's not going to make any overtly offensive or straightforward gestures. He just puts his hands up in a peaceful, I mean, no harm kind of way and just kind of steps against the wall like, I'm I'm barely here. Look, I'm I'm graffiti. The figure there in the staircase takes a half step back and kind of rests his back against the stairway wall and then reaches his hand down towards you and says, Come, my friend, come watch the gods return. <laughs> you know what? Doc doesn't even hesitate. I would love to. He actually takes Tariq's hand and helps up the st- and uses it to help himself up the stairs because yes, Tariq is, sucks Tariq is quite the physical. He's quite the physical helper. Um, so you take his hand and, and you kind of half move, half leap up the staircase. Fantastic! Uh, and you see, you see the uh, the plateau here on top of the temple. It's not there's not much more than maybe a, a space thirty feet around, but there's space up here, and the the priestess has made her way on top here and she seems to be preparing to do something uh sigmund sequesters himself to the side if he can somewhere where he has a good view but is very clearly out of the way the best you're able to do is is basically get to the top of this stairway and kind of peek over you're not allowed to perfect you feel um it would be bad form for you to try to step out onto this landing i can quite literally feel Tariq's eyes turning into meat hooks and dragging me back into the stairs okay. yeah more like like you do the eager thing that you would always do the investigative doctor that the, the well, wanting yeah. the learned man wants to know more and you can feel his, his one of his hands like at your waist like preventing you from moving Doc kind of if you get too eager smiles and nods but uh then we'll take his journal out uh hold it up to Tariq, kind of questioning, you know, the journal and the pen, like, is this okay? You get a very quick no from him. Doctor puts it away. <laughs> use use your eyes. Experience it with your heart. Doc smiles and begins to rapidly memorize as much as he can and experience the or, uh, what's going on. Okay. And so, Miss O'Shea... On your action, you're going to continue to cast, yes? Correct. Keeping my eyes on the center. Because it seems like that's where they're kind of going towards. So I would like you to roll intelligence for me. Because I think you're a reasonably intelligent person. I have a, a 90 in intelligence, so yes. Reasonably intelligent. I had a 59 out of 90. You know one thing is for certain. You are never going to finish this spell before they get here. Not like this. Okay. The spell takes too long to cast. You can feel it. You can feel the growing power. You can feel the electricity in the air. It's there, but the incantation is taking you too long. You're not a quitter, though. That's not your way. Do I know a way to speed it up? If I know it's there and I can feel it, can I, like, reach out even more? Or can I ask Yig to help me out. Basically, like, I'm gonna just reach out with everything. Like, call on everything. Try and, like, whatever feels, like, palpable. Like, can I, like, reach up and almost, like, grab the electricity? I will take that into account in the next round. Uh, So you are at the top of your lungs calling for the father to deliver his justice. So now the, um, the other children will go. So these forces split effectively into two groups. Now, a north and a south group. And they are still barreling towards you. Okay. Uh, the camels look exceedingly worried in this land, just so you're aware. You've got, you've got a few rifle shots left, Jack. You know that. you got a few, a few pistol shots, a few rounds of fire, and that's, and that's going to be it. Yeah. So um, I still have Jack's pistol that he gave me. I never handed it back. He gave you a gun. Yeah, 38. Right, and I have a rifle now that I'm shooting. So one thing I'm going to do is I am you know, going to take that pistol out that he gave me. I look around to see how my fellow uh, my fellow investigators are doing. They're, they're lining up shots and trying to take them. Uh, uh, at some point, Otto disappeared. You're not sure where he's at. I don't see a body of his anywhere, right? You do not. Okay, no. that's good. Maybe he's scared. He, well, 
He's kind of a big baby. Is there anything out there wounded already? No. Okay. Last person you wounded, Sam, killed, kill stole off of you, so. I'm going to um, take a shot at the one that's all the way north, but it's in the front of the line. This here? Yep. Very good. Go ahead and make me a firearms roll. I have an 11 out of 65. That's an impale. You line them up and take another shot and this thing's head comes clean off. So it's fairly simple to see for those of you who are out here that um, Miss Lane's pretty damn good with a rifle. Told you. Hasn't missed yet. So, Sam, on 115. So I I go to line up a shot on the one that's kind of closer to the southwest and I, I, I close an eye and I probably smile a bit to myself as I drop the 45 into the sling and yeah. produce the little lady. Oh, yeah. And blast that one and probably the one next to it. Yep. That is a 58 over 74. I think that's a 16. It's a shotgun, right? Yeah. So, 10. I like that. Gone. Okay. And uh, th- their friend. Oh, love it. Max damage. So, we'll just wipe them off the board. That's easy. A little closer, fellas. A little closer. Um, yeah, I, I will break the chamber and reload. Okay. Uh, so that is a snap that everybody hears around here because the shotgun is a the shotgun block opening up is pretty significant. Jack, you are up. Okay. I am now within uh, pistol range. Yes, sir. So I'm, I'm going to swivel to the north. And those three guys in a line up there at the top. Yes. I'm going to hit each one of them. Right here? Yeah. Okay. 79. That works. Damage. Five. Okay. I'm going to hit him again. That's gotcha. Because he's not dead, obviously. He's not. Oh, I missed with that one. 85. Ooh. And the third shot. Jesus, I missed with that one, too. <laughs> so you do five damage. Yeah paying for that last round. That law of averages is coming back. Okay. Uh, so that is Jack on 110. And so on 70, Otto, I would like you to make me uh, a strength roll. A successful strength roll will allow you to get the barrel down the hallway. I'll be damned. 18 under 40. Very good. Hard success. Uh, so you, with using both your hands and feet, continue to push this thing down the hallway. And luckily, Egyptians or Egyptian-adjacent people who built this place built a nice level floor. Nice level stone floor. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you return to the mouth of the, well, the steps of the temple. Uh, and to get the barrel up, you'll you'll at some point either have to pick it up or you have to leave it here as a um, awaiting present. I yell at everybody, get inside. Okay. Start yelling at people to get inside. And that will bring it to Alexander's action on 65. So the first thing I will do is send Maeve a message because of our blood connection. Mm-hmm. Spend a hit point. Don't worry, little sister. Help is on the way. Just hold the line. And with that, I will have my hands down at the top of the temple and everything is still. There's no wind. There's not much sound. And as I raise my hands, all of the dust that settled on the top of the temple begins to rise as my hands go up it ripples out into the desert and forms start to rise when my hands reach the peak where they are fully raised there is sand just everywhere and still holding form until Four servitors have completely risen and my hands close into fists and everything drops. All right. 
Sigmund, make me a sandwich. Yeah. 63 over 47. That is direct, direct control over the forces of nature. Not something the doc was really prepared for. Go ahead and lose four sanity. Oh, fine. But not because you told me to. Right. Uh, So these creatures that arise from the, the surface of the temple are roughly seven to eight feet tall. They're broad at the shoulders. They wear no garments. They are completely scaled and they have the powerful upper body of a man and the head of a serpent. Clawed fingers and strange kind of, we would say almost like ostrich-like knees until they kind of sit back on them. They crowd around the priestess who summoned them. Maybe you're going to continue to cast? Yeah. Do I feel like I'm like finding a way to cast faster? You feel like there's a surge of power that's gone off from the temple. You have no idea what it is, but it, it fills you with just this rush of heat. You feel like you might be able to finish this spell. Yeah, I was going to say, can I take that and like funnel it through? I don't know. Why don't you make me a power roll? Okay. Will do. That's a negative. It's a 98 out of 83. You could either spend the luck, which would be 15 points. Mm -hmm. Or you could push that power roll. That does not sound like a good idea with the rolls that I have had. I'll spend the luck. It's fine. Good. You spend the luck. You feel the spell coming faster. It's almost here. Doctor... Any action you'd like to take other than observation at this point? Well, since Doc just lost four sanity, uh, it's going to be up to Tariq to keep him in the stairwell now. As it's, that's, he's, first of all, the Doc, um, the Doc has to touch one of those snake guys. He has to feel, I mean, they just appeared. And that's, he has to see what they feel like. Like, to make sure that they're not just a, a, a figment. Stop touching things. Never going to happen. But uh, he also is cognizant enough of his own well-being that he won't uh, just go marching on out there. He, he just kind of wants to creep out there a little, maybe. So make me a stealth roll, Doctor. <laughs> okay. Holy crap. That's a six under 28, a hard success. Oh, very good, Doctor. Uh, so you stealth your way on out. And there isn't a hand to hold you back this time. The plateau is steady, but the power that brought these creatures here is still tickling the air around you. And you reach out and you run just the tips of your index and middle finger across one of their thighs because they're so tall. And the skin is... Scales, skin, whatever it is, it, it it responds to your touch. You see the flesh ripple. And then the being's head turns. And you hear a deep and satisfied hiss as that serpent mouth opens. Oh, who could have foreseen this coming? Would I have heard that? No, but you will. Well, you hear. You wouldn't hear Sigmund get out, but you would. You would hear the serpent move. He's. Um, you'll just have to get one of your children back in line before it eats someone. Fantastic. Okay. And so, the two groups move again, and they draw very much closer into range. Some of them begin consuming channels. Camels fighting back. Oh, oh yeah. I'm gonna grab the camels and drag them into the temple. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's go. I need to ride out of here. At this point, uh, with their movements having gotten you into melee, into near melee range, the next actions you'll take will be the last before they'll be able to physically attack you. I'm gonna take the one that's closest to Jack to the south. 
Mm-hmm. Jack's not in my way, right? No, you can fire. You'll you'll be able. That will be a shot that you could make. I got a forty-six. Roll damage. I have a fourteen. Jack, one is about to swing on you when its head explodes from a rifle shot. It spatters you with all sorts of nasty juices. Wouldn't be the first time. Right. Sam? So now that we've had a chance to really see these things move, could I get uh, an estimate as to how fast they are on foot? Probably no faster or slower than the average man or woman. Do I think I'm faster than they are? You think you're faster, yeah. Okay. But not much. I, I understand. Okay, so... The one directly to the south of me, I will wheel and fire at. Okay, go ahead. Right, because they're in range now, so I get all 46. Yep. So 10, 13, 19 plus 2, so 21 to his yep. face or its face. Well, it's it's a spread, though, because it's a shotgun. So it's the same damage applied to all targets in the area. Sure. Um, Jack nearly get hit with buckshot from this thing that goes on. Look, I'm over Jack's head. So I will stand right. for the last shot and I will shoot over Jack. Okay, go ahead. And that is a 19 over 74. It's a hard success. Okay, roll damage. 10, 11 total. Okay. The second part of this shotgun goes off. And if you weren't deaf before, Jack, you're certainly, your ears are ringing okay. now. My tinnitus. Right. Well, anyway. Um, it, it goes off again and more of this road gets cleared. More of the dunes are soaked with these creatures' blood. That said, Jack? Can I move across the space right there to propel up Lillian into the tunnel? No, because the tunnel's here. It's not a tunnel. Remember, it stares down. Well, right, right. So, like, you would have to go and grab her and pull her back. Well, I kind of wanted to grab her and kind of push her. She's not in directly in front of the tunnel anymore, directly in front of the stairs anymore. And she's, she's had to move to the side to get the rifle shots off. So it's not, it's not as, it doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means it's not as smooth of an action as you'd like to make it. Right. Then I will move and step in front of her and then start firing. You move and you step in front of her. And when you do, you catch sight of a barrel at the bottom of the stairs and auto. You're too perceptive of mm-hmm. a character to not see it. No one else would make it out because everybody else is focused forward. But when, as soon as you turn, you pick up the barrel and you pick up auto and then you move into position. So you have that information now. Okay. You have no idea what's in the barrel, but right. Okay. Go ahead and make your uh, rolls. We're trying to stand in front of Lillian and May, basically. <laughs> and I will shoot the guy oh, directly Jesus. ahead of me. Yeah, you, you see it before it happens, Sam. It's it's the move. It's well, it's an impale. Okay. <clears throat> so damage rolled is not necessary. Right. Uh, you step up that distance to cover your compatriots, and you put the first one down, and you send them to whatever hell they belong to. Where to now, Jack? Uh, directly north of that. Down okay. With it. Roll. Fifty-eight. Damage, please. Uh, 11. Okay. You silence another. And then 78. Or 9. They expire. Like they never even existed. And then and then I turn back to Lillian. Run! Yeah, not, unfortunately not something you're going to be able to do until next round, right. but he tells you to run. Not that everyone else out here hasn't told you to run. <laughs> and everybody else hasn't been told to run. And, and, and though I've killed like just as many of the beasts as they have. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah. Very good. But run. Uh, so, uh, Alexandra. But run. Yes. I, snake people that I have summoned are around me. I catch the hint of blood that isn't part of the family. Mm hmm. And I look around. And I look down. At this human that is touching one of my summons. And I will take the few steps forward that are necessary and just 
stare for a few moments knowing that he's not looking at me. I will move this warrior out of the way and my feet are resting right where it had been previously. And because I know that this is someone that my little sister relies on, I will reach a foot out and gently nudge him into a crouching position. Yeah, Doc does not resist as uh, he uh, did not realize that she was that close and was kind of entranced with this giant snake guy. So he's probably got more of that like kind of squinched up, I'm about to get hit or shot fate look on his face. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, he, he easily just kind of topples over. Just go with the flow. You do so. And I will just give him a long stare before I reach a hand out and under my breath mutter something else in a language that the doctor is not going to understand. No, yeah. Sounds like wind chimes, doctor. Oh, it's quite pretty. And my hand glows ever so faintly for a moment. The blood that is on the back of this hand shimmers and reaches out towards the doctor. And it embeds itself into his chest. <laughs> Why don't you make a power roll? <laughs> 19. Can I spend three luck to make that a uh, extreme? Absolutely. I'm going to do that. Would you like to upgrade your die? Roll a d8. Invest a single hit point. I heal him for six. Doctor, your body is flooded with something. Whether it be energy or blood or a mixture of both, you are not sure. But all of your major arteries are uh, rushed with an additional fluid. This has a unfortunate after effect because of course the body is a sealed system when it comes to blood yes yeah Uh, and so there is part of you which must after this injection is done this forced injection of someone else's blood you must expel a portion of your own and so you do but you get healed so there's that so I'm th- throwing up blood or is, is it also coming out of like my sinuses and such? Oh, absolutely. Oh, fantastic. So I'm also crying and have a little coming out of my ears. What's a little blood between you and a priestess, right? Uh, I mean, a little, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start looking like Geeky Pop here in a second. Very well. Uh, and so we will turn to Miss O'Shea. You are prepared. You have done everything you possibly can. I'm aiming for the center of the group of four to the north. Mm -hmm. Not the two eating the camels, but the other four. And yeah, that's where I'm going to throw it down. Okay. So I'd like you to roll 66. So that's 20. Okay. So from the clouds overhead, a series of streaks begin to surge rough jagged lines down towards the ground they connect with the two scepters that Maeve has in her hand they create an an arc above her head and then immediately transfer to the ground with a roar through the space. Lillian, your hair stands on end. Uh, And when the bolts hit, they spider out in a huge section of the desert. And you watch her incinerate camel and object alike. It is a ferocious 
feeling Miss O'Shea. The roar to you feels like the sound the father makes when he speaks your name. It's a rush. Nice. Can I then, like, gesture the snakes forward in front of us? Sure. Okay. And so I'm going to leave this portion of the episode right there. And we'll get back to the rest of the finale series next week when we'll learn maybe what that purple glow was on the other side of the dunes. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you to our guest uh, star this evening, Allie. We appreciate you coming in and playing uh, Alexandra. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And so we'll see you next week. <laughs>